who is the luckiest person in history? Definitely Timothy Dexter basically, he was a completely incompetent businessman who accidentally got lucky dozens of times and built a fortune. After a while, some of his peers who all hated him because they were actually smart and he was just dumb and lucky told him to ship coal to Newcastle the equivalent of telling someone to ship oil to North Dakota or Saudi Arabia. He did, and it got there just in time for a major strike at the coal mines so he made a ton of money from what should have been a bad idea. In terms of chance I'd say Bill Morgan, Australian Bill Morgan was declared dead for 14 minutes and lived unscathed, to celebrate his survival, he bought a scratch card 127k car, the news asked him to r enact the scratch card moment so he bought another car and won a 250k jackpot. That is just awesome, he was genuinely shocked, amazed, and humbled in seconds. Probably the luckiest and unluckiest person in history Tsutomu Yamaguchi, he was at both Hiroshima and Nagasaki and survived until 2010. Andrew Jackson, he survived what was to be the first assassination attempt of a sitting president of the US, only because the assassin's two pistols misfired, both of them. That's practically a 1 in 1 million chance of happening, both pistols were tested later and worked perfectly, legend has it, Jackson later beat the assassin with his cane. Franselik, a Croatian music teacher, began his lucky streak in 1962 on a train going from Sarajevo to Dubrovnik, the train unexplainably jumped the tracks and fell onto an icy river killing 17 passengers. Sulik managed to swim to shore suffering from hypothermia and a broken arm. A year later while on an airplane, its door flew off and Sulik was sucked out of the airplane. The plane crashed and he woke up in a hospital. He'd been found in a haystack. Then in 1966, Sulik was on a bus that went off the road and into a river. Four people were killed, but he suffered minor injuries. In 1970, his car caught on fire and he stopped it and got out just before the whole car blew up. In 1973, Sulik was driving another car when a faulty fuel line sprayed gas all over the engine and flames blew through his air vents. His only injury was the loss of most of his hair. In 95 he was hit by a bus, but on sustained minor injuries. Finally in 1996 he was driving on a mountain road when he went around a bend and saw a truck coming right at him. He ran his car through a guardrail and jumped out to watch his car blow up 300 feet below him. In 2003, Sulik bought a lottery ticket for the first time in 40 years at the age of 74. He ended up winning 1 million. Jean Bernadot was born in 1763 in Pau, southern France. His father was a prosecutor he wasn't from a poor family, but as you can see he was nowhere near nobility. He was just one of so many middle-class people in 18th century France, and nobody. Then the French Revolution comes and Bernadotte, who had joined the army as a private, started rising through the ranks and managed to befriend a talented general named Bonaparte. When his friend Napoleon was crowned emperor in 1804, Bernadotte was made marshal of the empire. Becoming a marshal after having started as a nobody is quite an achievement, but in Bernadotte's case it was just the beginning. During a battle in Germany in 1806, Bernadotte's army captured some Swedish soldiers who were fighting on Prussia's behalf. As Sweden wasn't officially at war with France, Bernadotte arranged that they were treated as guests and thought nothing more of the matter. In 1810, the Swedish king was deposed after losing Finland to Russia, and shortly after his heir died and Sweden found itself without a king. Then, a Swedish noble, remembering that French officer who had treated those prisoners so kindly, proposed that Bernadotte was offered the crown of Sweden. Even though both Bernadotte and Napoleon thought at first the offer was a joke, the Swedes, desperate to find a king, turned out to be completely serious. Napoleon thinking he could easily gain Sweden as an ally, let Bernadotte resign his post and go to Stockholm to be proclaimed king. As it turned out, Bernadotte was cleverer than Napoleon was giving him credit for in 1813 he betrayed his old friend and Sweden joined the alliance against Napoleon. This allowed him to keep his throne after Napoleon's defeat and to gain Norway in 1814. Jean Bernadotte was born a nobody and died a king after a series of unexpected strokes of luck. And, unlike his friend Napoleon or his fellow marshals, 
not only did his dynasty endure, but his descendants still reign over Sweden today. I rank up there, I once fell 60 plus feet out of a tree and landed within a few feet of a cardiologist who was jogging by, just in time to perform CPR and save my life. Nichiren, a 12th century Buddhist monk in Japan who escaped execution by beheading, when the executioner was struck by lightning upon raising his sword. Don't judge me, but possibly Hitler, he survived the shell that killed everyone but him in the trench in World War I, then moved on to become the head of the Nazi party, got elected, and then moved on to avoid narrowly, by chance, how many assassinations, he's pretty lucky, at least. Fidel Castro, can't name anyone else who's had 600 assassination attempts on their life. I would say Adolf Sachs before the age of 29, he fractured his skull falling out of a window, escaped poisoning and asphyxiation several times, almost drowned, escaped cancer, almost died from measles, and endured many other broken bones and burns, it appears somebody really didn't want the saxophone to be invented. It is Orlando Bloom, okay, well, I am kind of serious, early in life he goes to school and studies acting, he is good enough to get a few bit parts in a few things, but for the most part he is in student plays etc, then he falls three stories and breaks his back, he lands just right and avoids being paralyzed, after recovering from his fall he goes back to do a small play and Peter Jackson just happened to be in the audience and asked him to audition for his next project. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, so his first non-bit part non-small theater role is in one of the biggest movie series of all time. If you watch some of the making of documentaries for those movies you get a sense that he and Liv Tyler did a little more than just carpool, even if not, he then, did other movies like Troy and Black Hawk Down as well as the Pirates of the Caribbean. Along the way he has dated women like Sienna Miller, Kate Bosworth, Kirsten Dunst's, Penelope Cruz, and of course he was married until recently to Miranda Kerr, an inch one way or the other during his fall and ends up in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, instead he lands just right and goes on to be one of the biggest stars in the world. Guy hits the lotto, blows all his money, hits the lotto again, he didn't learn his lesson but dang it. Teddy Roosevelt when he was giving a speech he was shot and the bullet just happened to hit a glasses case and some manuscript, he then continued the speech for another 90 minutes. Joan of Arc, replay that situation a thousand times and there's no way it happens twice, edit for those asking for an explanation, I am no historian, but my understanding is that at every point she basically did the riskiest thing which was least likely to succeed and she caught a lucky break every time. Plenty of people claimed to have visions, but everyone decided to listen to hers, she would repeatedly put herself on the front lines and get in the thick of battle, and people who do that sort of thing aren't known for their longevity, she endorsed risky, some would say reckless military tactics, and came out victorious, basically, either she was the luckiest person to ever live or she really did have God's unlisted phone number, as others have noted, however, at some point God stopped returning her calls. Hitler pre-1941, he carried messages in World War I for the whole war, it was a job where people lasted an average of three weeks, he also survived a gas attack, after the war he just happened to go to the same beer hall that had his views and took over the Nstap, after getting tried for treason, he only got five years prison out in nine months, when the penalty is usually life, the depression boosts his popularity, he still had the same exact policies throughout the 20s. He wasn't really that popular in 1932, he only peaked at 37% popularity when the communists were at 44%. Immediately after he gets appointed chancellor, a communist burns down the Reichstag, which he uses to gain absolute power, and Hindenburg happens to die at the time he can take absolute control of Germany. He is very fortunate to face almost zero opposition in foreign policy until he invades Poland, which he was afraid of and also takes France remarkably quickly, not to mention all those assassination attempts he survived. He was known as the most unlucky guy in the world, 
who nearly lost his life twice when skating, until the 2002 Winter Olympics. He should have been eliminated in the quarterfinals, but he advanced because someone got disqualified. He got through the semis as well because everyone fell right in the end, and in the finals, he is half a lap after the top trio when they all crash into Ecother in the last corner. He stays on his feet and wins the gold medal. Event off he wasn't even very good. Hernan Cortes, Aztec ancient prophecies believed that the bearded god Quetzalcoatl was supposed to return on a ship to the east to take back and rule the land of the Aztecs. Cortes was bearded, came from the east, and arrived on around the same date the prophecies foretold. The Aztec ruler, Moctezuma II, believed that Cortes was a god. I'll go way back Alexander the Great, he pretty much fought all his battles personally and personally led charges straight into the enemy several times. He went up against numerically superior armies numerous times and never lost, usually thanks to cavalry charges led personally by him. Despite still dying at 32, it wasn't even in battle. In high school, I went to go buy some Gatorade from the vending machine. They were small bottles like 8 ounces or something I don't know. It was also kind of a ripoff because they cost $1.25 per bottle, even though they should cost around 50 cents given how small the bottles were. Anyway, I was thirsty, so I decided to buy some anyway, so inserted my money and pressed the button that vended the Gatorade. Out of the machine, popped a Gatorade bottle, as expected, then another, and another. In total, the machine vended 8 bottles of Gatorade. 8 bottles, and I only paid for one. I don't think you understand how big of a deal this is. I saved like 8.75, so I put the 8 bottles of Gatorade in my backpack, I drank 2 or 3 myself, and just gave the rest away. I don't think this has ever happened before, so I consider myself to be the luckiest man to have ever lived. Edit our school vending machines don't take 10s, or even 5s for that matter. So if I would have accidentally put in a $10 bill, I don't think it would have accepted it. Also, in case anyone was wondering, the flavor of Gatorade was fierce grape. I would have to say that old couple who were married for 50-60 years, and they died 6 hours apart without knowing the other had died. Imagine living to the old age of 85 with the love of your life, and both of you dying without the pain of seeing the other one die. They both passed away peacefully as well. If I remember correctly, I couldn't ask for more out of life. Gavrilo Princip, his organization, the Black Hand, attempted to assassinate the Archduke Franz Ferdinand while he was being driven in his car. Long story short, they botched the initial try because the grenade had a 10 second delay before blowing up harmlessly underneath the wheel of the car. No more than an hour later, one of the other assassins, Princip, was eating a sandwich at a nearby cafe when saw Ferdinand's car with the engine stalled idling just up the road. So he promptly walked up, pulled his gun, and killed Ferdinand. So basically, World War I was kicked off because some lucky Serb assassin was a few yards away when the Archduke's car broke down. Ringo Starr, a moderately talented drummer who joins a band after they pay some very hard dues. Oh, and that band happens to have three other guys who could front bands of their own. Oh, and one of them ended up being the greatest pop songwriter of all time and another one of them a cultural icon. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of Reddit Universe.